All right, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the webinar for today. It's using YouTube to help grow your business. Um, and just so you know, I'll be saying this kind of throughout the, the webinar, but um, this webinar is being recorded and we will provide that link to the recording as well as this slide deck to all uh, registered people who registered. And um, we will also be sharing a survey link and it really means a lot to us if you would take the time immediately following this webinar uh, to fill out that survey. And I'll be reminding you uh, throughout the webinar to do that as well. It just really gives us uh, important feedback for us to get better. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. It's 9.01. Um, we have a lot of content to cover and I'm uh, just happy that you decided to join us. Uh, I have to read through this disclaimer, so bear with me um, as I just take care of this housekeeping bit. Um, the information provided in this webinar and any supplemental materials provided to registrants are intended for educational and informational purposes only. It does not constitute professional, financial, or legal advice. No registrant should act or fail to act on the basis of any material contained in this webinar without obtaining proper financial, legal, or other professional advice specific to their situation. The Northern California Small Business Development Center and its host, CHSU Sponsored Programs Foundation, specifically disclaims any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the information presented in this webinar. Um, another thing to note is if you have any questions, uh, we'll have a specific Q&A time at the end of this webinar. But if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll make sure someone's monitoring the chat. Um, if it's an important question or a lot of you asking the same thing, you might uh, pause the presentation to answer that question. So free, free, feel free to just uh, enter your questions into the chat. Um, this is about me. You'll have this slide deck so you can read about me. I don't need to go through this. Uh, but I love helping small businesses integrate with technology. Uh, so the agenda for today, um, I'm just going to do a quick overview. We won't spend that much time, but I wanted to, for those of you who are unfamiliar with who we are, Small Business Development Center, just do a quick introduction. And then we're going to go through the, the core of why you're here. Let's talk about YouTube. What is YouTube? Why should you be on YouTube? How do you set up a successful YouTube channel? What makes good content? How do you really maximize that content for your business? And how do you know if your content is actually doing anything? And like I said, we'll wrap it up with a, a Q&A at the end. So quick introduction to the SBDC. Um, we're a nonprofit and we provide no cost advisory training and services to small businesses. Our center is here in Northern California. We serve as Shasta and Trinity counties, but there is always an SBDC near you. And uh, you can, we can go over that at the end and how you can get in touch with your local SBDC. Um, like I said, we service the Northern California SBDC region. Um, and just to brag a little bit, there's some stats about how we've been able to increase sales for our clients and help our clients get capital infusion. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one consulting. We do webinars like this. We also do in-person trainings at our centers. Um, we help with funding and we're in partnership with the SBA. All right, so why YouTube? That's how I wanna start this out. And I think everyone knows that media consumption is just overtaken who we are, you know, um, surfing the internet is just what we do and if anyone has a question about something uh, before it was google it now it's youtube it uh, because you get to actually see what is actually being done instead of just heard about and most of the time google links google searches result in youtube videos anyway you know, it's how we learn something it's when we share things how we connect with people um, it's even how we buy things now so media consumption is pretty much here to stay. Um, as you can see, video is 82% of the world's consumer web traffic. That's a huge amount of the web traffic that's going around the internet. And 
nowadays, viewers have so many options to choose from in terms of where are they going to get their content? What am I going to use? What website to go to? Um, it's just an amazing uh, array of options. Google purchased YouTube in 2006 for $1.65 billion. That was back in 2006. But I think they made a good choice because YouTube alone in 2020, the revenue was 19.7 billion. That's just in 2020 alone. So I would say they got their money's worth. Um, but what this means is YouTube has access to all of Google's data and analytics. They're actually, you know, Google owns YouTube. And so the power of Google is in the power of YouTube and vice versa. YouTube has monthly 1.8 billion users. That's a staggering, if you ever just want to sit down and write out the amount of zeros, it's a lot of users month by month. And every day people watch over a billion hours, a billion hours throughout the globe and generate billions of views on YouTube. So YouTube is a tremendous platform to reach billions of, of viewers. It's also the second largest search engine in the world. Sorry, sorry, uh, Yahoo, sorry, Bing, sorry, DuckDuckGo. Uh, apart from Google, YouTube is the second largest search engine. It reaches 91% of the online population in the United States. So if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. You need to be on YouTube so you can reach the same audience that YouTube has access to. All right, let's talk about setting up a successful channel. Um, this is easier than um, what most people think. I know I've talked to, to several people and it's very easy to set up uh, a channel and get started today on having a YouTube presence. So let's go through this step by step. So step one, you wanna set up a YouTube business channel. And this is important. Um, some people might already have a personal channel um, as a part of you know, their everyday life. You, know, you might post personal videos or is this what you use to interact with other YouTube uh, users on a personal level? And you don't want to mix a business channel. You don't want to mix your business with your personal channel. Um, you want to have a channel specific for a business. So you want to set up a YouTube specific business channel. And you think of that as your YouTube digital storefront. You know, you think of that as how people might engage with your website. It's another door into your digital, your, your digital footprint. So think of it as a, just another access point to your, your digital store. So you don't want to mix your personal and your business. Now, a hint, um, you have to be very careful how you interact with people on YouTube because you want to interact with them as your business when you're conducting business activities and not your personal. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, you know, look at your competitors, get ideas for how they set up their channel, how they pr uh, produce content, what type of content. That's not ever, never a bad thing to look at, you know, the competitors in your space and see how have they set up their channel. But the primary thing is step one, you want to set up that business channel. And step two, just go out and make content. Um, with today's technology, with today's phones, being able to record in 4K, in 1080p, high quality video, um, you no longer need um, super expensive equipment. You don't need to go out and buy all this camera equipment and lighting and all these things, you can just get started um, with much smaller, more affordable devices, even your phone. Um, <clears throat> most phones take enough high quality content. In fact, if you just peruse a lot of the major network contents that do documentaries or uh, do talk shows, um, people are actually using their phone to live stream and, and record content. It's actually, more and more of an acceptable means. And I'll get to that in a second about successful content, but don't let equipment hold you back from beginning to record content. So just get out there and start capturing video, start recording your business, take videos, take pictures. 
get on your phone and just start capturing content. Step three, you're gonna to wanna to upload and organize your content. Um, obviously you need to upload it to YouTube, but organizing your content is, is a really, really easy thing and a powerful thing. The, the results really far away out the minimal effort it takes to organize your content. And that's creating specific playlists, that's creating uh, channels within subchannels within your channel, mostly playlists and subsections so that you can organize. So it makes your videos easier uh, to find and they have a higher chance of being watched in succession if you organize them in a channel section or a playlist. One of the things I highly recommend is for each business channel, you can have a channel trailer. And so when someone goes to your YouTube page, um, the, one of the first things they'll see is a channel trailer. And that's an opportunity to introduce your business, introduce yourself, and kind of uh, let people experience you uh, on a personal basis. So that's something I, I highly recommend uh, you do. But I know that when I go to a YouTube business page, if the YouTube, if the, if the videos are all over the place, I'm probably not going to stay. Because the last thing I want to do is have to sift through all their all their videos to find out what I'm looking for. So the more you're able to organize your content, the more likely they are to stay and to actually start to view some of your videos. And finally, step four, uh, realize that your YouTube channel is your is your business. So update your your graphics, use your brand, um, you know, feature thumbnails, feature your your look and feel. Um, Again, when I go to a, a, a business YouTube channel and that title graphic is empty, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to stay. It's those little things that help not only show that you're taking your channel seriously and it goes a long way, but it also is the first opportunity for a viewer to experience your brand. And so four easy steps. Go, you can go out there and you can set up your channel right away and, um, you know, those four steps are, are small efforts that have great return in terms of retaining users to your channel. And finally, sorry, five steps. Uh, remember that YouTube is a search engine. Um, and so use titles that actually make sense. Um, use descriptions that actually describe the video. Um, you know, be, be kind of intentional about what you say in the title and what you say in the description and add tags. Tags are powerful. <clears throat> so tags are hidden to the viewer, but they go into the algorithm rhythm of the search. So when you upload a video, you you know not only put in the title and the description and you choose a thumbnail, you can choose a custom thumbnail, but you can add these tags and you wanna tag anything and everything that the video might pertain to. Um, so that's really important as well. So five steps. Now, how do you drive the billions of YouTube users to your channel? And that's what we want to talk about next is actually making good content. So the number one thing about good content is authenticity. You know, people are looking for something that is real and authentic. Um, when you think about some of the most famous, most consumed uh, video on YouTube, it's all the live stream stuff. It's the TikTok, it's the Instagram stories, it's the Facebook live stream. And why are they so popular? It's popular because they're typically unedited, unedited. they're typically unfiltered, they're typically authentic. You know, people are very interested um, in what's real. They wanna see something that's uncut. They don't wanna see it doctored, edited too much. Um, they wanna see kind of what's really going on, the behind the scenes. Um, is is what it's called and so just be authentic be who you are be genuine and give people a glimpse into what your business is about the people in your business what's happening behind the scenes you know they want to know what your brand is and what your products are but mostly they want to know who you are you know we I like the saying behind every business is the business owner and so they wanna know not only what the business is and what products or services you provide, but they're interested in getting to know who you are as a person. And so authenticity is the first and one of the most important things to remember when you make good content. So that means 
recording yourself. I know you might be like, oh, I'm terrible in front of a camera. Um, but all those little nuances that make you you are what people are interested in. So don't shy away from that. You know, the core requirements for good YouTube content are these things. Who? Who is the star? So you want to think about that when you make the good content. Who are you trying to highlight? Are you trying to highlight yourself as a business owner or your team? Are you trying to highlight the customers that are coming uh, that you're trying to reach? Are you trying to highlight the product? So you could have three different videos with three different stars. And so it's important to just make sure each video is focused on one star. Um, you know, obviously what, what is the story? What are you trying to communicate? Are you highlighting yourself? Are you highlighting your business? Are you highlighting a product suite? Are you highlighting a new product launch? Are you doing a special promotion? So you want to keep the themes simple. This also helps keep your videos short, right? And we'll talk about that a little later, um, but no one's going to really sit down and watch a 30 minute YouTube video on your business, unless it's super, super compelling. Uh, you know, our, our video attention span is very, very small. So having discrete intentional storylines is really important and helps keep your video short to the point. And finally, what sites and sounds describe your business? I cannot emphasize, emphasize this um, uh, enough. You know, we have all these senses, you know, and, and vision, what we see is only one. You know, what we hear is a powerful way that we remember a brand, what we smell and taste. Now, obviously we don't have smell of vision <laughs> you know, we don't have scratch and sniff through the video, but uh, you can still do an incredible uh, job of, of having someone experience your brand, your product and your services um, through video. So you wanna remember what, what is that encounter like? Maybe you're a consultant and so, you know, the, the sights and the sounds that they might experience, whether it's uh, you know paper moving or uh, getting money counted or you know things like that, there's still ways even for industries that might not have drivers like smell like coffee or or, or bakery. Uh, there's still ways to have people experience that that service uh, through video. And and I want to just play an example of uh, what I think is an amazing, uh, amazing video about motorcycles. And so kind of take a look and take notice of how they use sounds and sights to kind of draw in you as an audience. Hi, I'm Devin Beek. And I'm Richard Worsham. Welcome to Jazz Motorcycles. We design and hand build classically styled, lightweight, and easy to ride motorcycles. Our motorcycles are built for everyday riders. Riders that want to enjoy the simple thrill of two-wheel travel, that want to connect with their machine. All right. And so, you know, you can see that this video is not even three minutes long. But in the first 30 seconds, they did um, something amazing. They introduced themselves, they introduced the brand, and they had you hear that rev. Now I'm a motorcycle rider, so nothing gets me more excited than hearing that motorcycle rev. And they gave you a picture of the experience. You're out on the open road. And so that's amazing content. You know, they 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 put me in that experience. They re, they they tickled my senses. They heard, they allowed me to hear that revving of the motorcycle. And that's what I'm talking about is in a very short period of time. Now I could go on and, and watch this and I would watch it because I'm interested because they caught my attention. Um, but that's the point is in that first introduction area of 10 to 30 seconds, you're, you're providing that user experience. Let me... Get out of here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, again, I know I'm throwing a lot of uh, content at you. Don't worry, you'll have this video recording, you'll have the slides. Uh, so, I just kind of want you to, to absorb what I'm saying. How do you maximize this for your business? So, you've gone out, you know, you've recorded great content. How do you actually make it work? How do you drive traffic to your website? How do you actually use videos in 
converting sales. Um, number one, you want to target content to relevant viewers. Um, this is the scary part of YouTube and Google, right? They're collecting a ton of information about us. You know, our devices, our browsers, they're constantly collecting information about who we are. Um, we as individuals, because we're online so much, we're sending out millions of consumer signals. All of us are. What we like, what we're shopping for, when we we're about to buy. You guys ever have that funny thing where you're talking to someone about uh, a car and all of a sudden all of your Facebook feed is cars. Uh, kind of eerie, kind of scary, uh, but that's, that's the world we live in. Uh, when we choose to use technology, um, it's collecting all this information. So Google owns seven systems that are collecting these consumer information. So I've listed them there. Google, Maps, which a lot of us use. So where do we shop? What's our routine like? Gmail, so all of our email. YouTube, obviously. Chrome browser, Android OS. The Google App Store, what apps are you downloading? And Google Search, what are you looking for? So if you're like me and you're about to buy something, you usually go online and you research it. You look it up. Well, all that information is now coupled with me, and you can use that to target me with your video. <laughs> YouTube allows you to target audiences in many different ways. So I provide a link um, there that, that can explain it in a lot more depth um, if you're interested. But this is what you want to be doing to target audiences with your content. Um, demographics is one of the most important. So who is your audience? Where are they located? So age, gender, marital status, their parent or not. What's their household income? Um, where are they located? So for example, I have, a, I, have a, I have a car dealership. So I only want to show my content to women over 30 who are single and live in San Francisco. As crazy as that sounds, and I probably would never want to be that specific, uh, but let's say all I have are cars that woman traditionally buy. So boom, I'm able to be that specific with my targeting content on YouTube. Uh, so demographic, two, interest and intent. What's their interest? What's their behavior? You know, what are they searching? What are they looking for? So for example, I only want to show my content to women over 30 who are single, live in San Francisco, and are looking to buy a new car. So maybe they've been searching and a lot of their searches are new cars. What's the next next What's the newest car? What's the best car? What's the best car for San Francisco? Climbing hills, parking on crazy angles and things like that. So what's their interest? What's their intent? What content are they watching? You know, what are they interested in? So again, I wanna show my content to women over 30 who are single, live in San Francisco, looking to buy a new car and are watching videos on how to drive a manual transmission. So you're, you're layering all these interests with their contents and what they're searching for. So you can be hyper-focused on who you're targeting your audience at. Yes, you can say, hey, anyone looking for a new car. But if your product is specialized and is gonna have a higher conversion ratio with a specific demographic who are interested in certain content, why wouldn't you target your content to that, to that audience? And finally, life events. You know, getting married, graduating, moving, whether you know it or not, because of our search patterns and what we're looking at and what we're watching, these uh, Google is able to kind of make suggestions about upcoming or previous life events. So again, all of that, expect, except on they're looking at videos on how to drive a manual transmission and they're about to get married, you know, or they're about to have a, a kid or they're, you know, who knows? And I'm able to 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 focus my search my target based on what people are interested in what they're searching for. So powerful, powerful way that you can be specific and intentional with your content. Uh, kind of scary <laughs> to be honest, but it's out there and we've agreed to it. So you might as well leverage this information for your benefit to target your business to these users. Um, so the most common thing, apart from content that you might film about your business that resides on your channel, which is, I think is an amazing idea that showcases you and your team and your product. You also wanna use YouTube ads. And YouTube ads are what, you know, 
a lot of times are those annoying things that you have to sit through before you watch the video you actually want to watch. Um, but they have, they exist for a reason. They exist because they work. And YouTube and Google wouldn't have it there unless they actually worked, right? So I, I provided another link for you to do more research, but ads are what actually drive the most traffic to your channel. It, ads are what are driving users to click through and land on your website and land on your channel. Um, why they allow users to see and hear your content. So I love these two statistics. If someone sees and hears at the same time, they're twice as more likely to remember your brand and three times more likely to remember your ad. So that's something that's sitting with them throughout the day. And when they think of it, they're like, oh, I remember I saw an ad. And they remember your brand, meaning your name, your business name. They can search it up on Google. They can search it up on YouTube. Um, YouTube pushes three specific types of ads, like what they call them, a bite, six seconds. It's really, really small, but you'd be amazed what you can communicate in six seconds. A snack is 15 to 20 seconds, and a meal is 30 plus seconds. So the meals are those longer ads um, that most people usually skip, right? And those are the true view skippable ads. So I know a lot of you have seen it where the viewer can actually skip after five seconds. You know, I'm usually watching that timer counting down to when I can skip it, unless it's an ad that catches my attention and it's something that I want to actually watch, right? But it gives consumers a choice. Um, it's kind of the best of the both, both worlds. Five seconds is not too long, uh, but who knows? I, I like them because if I'm actually looking for something, Hey, it's kind of like YouTube, do the work for me. Bring me the ads of something that I want to see. And you have to have that mindset um, that they can skip after five seconds. It gives them a choice. And you, you know, you only pay if a viewer watches for 30, a viewer watches for 30 seconds. It's not a bad deal, right? But the key is you need to grab their attention within that five seconds. So you want to include the brand and the product in those fir first five seconds with a sight, with a sound, with something that really captivates your audience. Um, these bumper ads, bumper ads are the six second ads um, and they're all over the place. They're just quick six seconds of the product. But nine out of 10 viewers can recall the ad from just that six seconds. So how do you use these two together? use bumper ads to target viewers that have skipped your longer true view ads. And you can actually wire your YouTube campaign to do that. Okay, play bumper ads targeted to these people who have also seen your true viewed ads but skipped it. That's how powerful the analytics are. And there's finally true view for action and that actually provides something uh, for the user to do. Uh, which is a really good idea. So they've watched the true view ad, they've watched the longer 30 second ad, they're interested, and then they can click a button and that usually gets them to more information, takes them to your channel, leads them to your website, your product page. So it actually allows them to take an action. And then finally, their companion, companion banners. You might not even have noticed it, but next time you're on YouTube, over you know the right, the right panel, where it lists their videos, upcoming videos, what's gonna play next. There's a little, little banner section. And so you can have your companion banner, your banner of your brand, of your channel, of your product there. And so it appears during and after your ad, it links uh, to your YouTube channel or your website. And so what YouTube recommends is that you always use a companion banner if you're gonna use an ad. So it kind of provides a way, even if they've skipped it, that companion banner is there uh, for the duration of that video and they, it gives them an opportunity to click it. All right, so how do you actually measure results from your campaign? So YouTube offers tools to measure the success of your ad. Why wouldn't they? So there's all these analytics that are capturing all this information. And you have these ads out there and you have your own channel. Well, they're gonna provide uh, you know, the means for you to see, am I being successful or not? And so when you think of a marketing campaign or what you might do, it's very familiar with Facebook. Um, 
you know, what they might do through Facebook or, or the same thing, um, they have two main tools and one is called Google Brand Lift and it measures, you know, brand awareness and consideration, impressions and views. Uh, what's an impression? Impression is, you know, how long your video thumbnail might appear on the viewable screen uh, or near what they're seeing and views are actually, you know, when someone actually takes a look at your video or your website or your channel and how long are they on there? You know, that's what Google Analytics does. It allows you to measure clicks and conversions. You know, are people actually going to your channel? Are people actually viewing your website? Are people actually viewing your videos? How long are they watching your videos for? You know, are they staying for 30 seconds? Are they staying for five seconds? All of that feedback allows you to make the adjustments you need to make, um, especially if people are coming to one of your videos and they're just not staying for five seconds. And that, okay, you need to come up with something different or something that really captivate their attention. So uh, think about, again, you have the, the power of Google and the data of Google and the analytic capacity of Google in YouTube as well. And so um, you wouldn't want to spend all this time and effort and resources on putting an ad campaign together without actually measuring the results. So you want to get into the analytics side and you want to measure how you're doing. And the big reason is because we all know that you know, consumers go through a journey, right? All of us probably have written sales funnels about the consumer journey for our product from first exposure all the way down to becoming a repeat customer. And Google and YouTube allow you to leverage those analytics to guide your user through the buying journey, journey using your content and using your YouTube videos. It's, it's quite amazing. So in my instance, like I said, I'm a car dealership, right? But people don't want to buy a car. They don't usually buy it on the whim. Most people don't, right? They, they usually think about it. They research it. You know, they talk to their friends. They do a ton of research. They're watching videos. They're trying to find reviews. They're trying to find all this information. And it, it's usually, you know, a couple of weeks to a couple of months um, of kind of a process, you know. So what does that look like in able to, being able to leverage YouTube analytics on that buying journey. Well, I've kind of listed it here. So a consumer wants to buy a video. What are they going to do? Probably they're going to go to YouTube. They're going to watch videos on that car. They're going to find out what are the pros, what are the cons, what are other people's experience, what are professional reviewers have to say about this car, or maybe I don't have an idea of the car that I want. So I'm just saying, what's the best car for this type of traffic, or I want a truly cross-dimensional car or best gas mileage with this. So I'm watching YouTube and YouTube is gathering all this information about my, my videos. Well, because of my campaign and I've said, hey, put a bumper ad for people who are looking at cars who are in my geographic location. So boom, the bumper ad appears and <clears throat> it's just a six second ad, but because they're looking to buy a car, they're like, oh, I remember that dealership. And then they go and they go to Google and they search for my car dealership, right? Google has all that information as well. Okay, they search for your car dealership. My car dealership comes up, maybe I paid for an ad, or maybe I just do a really good job. And, you know, it's one of the top search results. So they actually end up clicking on my link to visit my car dealership. And then obviously I store a cookie. I'm able to understand, okay, they came, they, they saw, what did they click through, what cars did they look at? And so when they go back to YouTube, because it's a journey, right? They're continuing to look at videos. Um, I have that information and I'm able to remarket my ads back to them. Maybe I try to see if they're gonna click on a, a TrueView ad or an actionable ad, right? A clickable, clickable ad, um, but I'm pounding them with my ad. Right, because I know they're looking for a car. They're in my geographic location. They fit my target audience. So they come and they visit my dealership again. They schedule a test drive. Meanwhile, I'm continuing to <clears throat> push and promote and market myself to them through YouTube. And they finally end up after that test drive. I do a great job because I'm a great car salesman. 
I'm not, by the way. Um, and then they visit my dealership and they purchase. And so that's kind of how you're leveraging the Google data and the YouTube data to be strategic in what you what you market to specific users. <clears throat> so in conclusion, how do you uh, set up a successful business page? Uh, you're gonna set up a YouTube page, you're gonna set up a specific YouTube business page. And uh, you could do it in a matter of minutes. It's, it's really easy um, setting that up uh, but you don't want to just remember set up a business page and have no branding on there. So you want to use that uh, splash title bar graphic, put a graphic of your brand, of your business. You want to film um, the trailer. You want to put that on there and you want to organize your content. And remember, you can get started today. Just get your phone, go out and start filming, you know, get a, get a friend or a team member to film you. Uh, or just get a tripod. A really easy, low-cost entry ways to actually start filming powerful content. And the most important thing that I can recommend about, recommend about your content is you just stay authentic. Stay authentic to yourself, to your brand, and to your product. The next step, identify and find customers interested in your product and services. And again, YouTube is owned by Google. And all of us, again, are sending out millions of consumer signals. So you're able, able to leverage um, all of that consumer data and find out people that are most likely to buy or be interested in your industry and in your product. Uh, create that powerful content. Uh, I'm not saying put everything unfiltered. You know, sometimes you want a polished, edited, video like that uh, motorcycle brand, you know, that was definitely a polished, intentional, edited video, but you don't have to have all of your videos be like that. But create powerful content that's actually going to showcase who, the what, you know, what's actually and what's the story that's being told. And then go out and measure the impact. Go out and use Google Analytics. Like if <clears throat> we're going to start there, and use it to target our audience. Let's end there and use it to measure our analytics. How are we doing? And that sometimes takes us just being humble <laughs> and being like, oh, this content wasn't good. Uh, let's, because no one's watching it, let's try something different. And so that feedback, that analytic and uh, willingness to adjust and change content, it might be looking at your competitor. Or, or looking at a channel of a competitor in your space that has a lot of subscribers and a lot of views and being like, hey, imitation is the best form of flattery and I wanna be successful like them. So what are they doing that's making them successful? And remembering that YouTube is a search channel. So people are going to that search bar <laughs> and using it like Google. And so, you know, be really smart with how you tag your content, how you title it, and how you add descriptions. And finally, you want to visit google.com forward slash grow. And you know, they're they're super focused obviously on making their tools really readily accessible and powerful for you. Why? Because they want you on their platform. They want you to use uh, their products. They want you to be successful with their products. And so they're they're super interested. Um, I can't say it's all for, you know, because they're amazing benefactors and you know love charity. Uh, it's obviously because they have a vested interest in having their platform, you know, take over the world if they haven't already. And so, uh, you know, they are providing a lot of support and a lot of tips and tricks and how you as a small business owner can be successful, especially on YouTube. Um, and the great thing is once you create this content on YouTube, uh, you can link it everywhere on your Twitter channel, on your Facebook feed, on your website, you know, uh, YouTube becomes this repository for all of your uh, interactive, immersive, experiential content. And then you can link it on all your other social media platforms and all your other uh, portfolio and your channels. And you're able to kind of leverage that power uh, and use it multiple ways. And so that's one of the things Google talks about is being able to put all your content and actually make it really work for you. So uh, 
that ends um, my presentation. I know it was a lot, uh, but we're going to send you the slide deck and we're going to send you the link to the video recording. And so now I kind of wanted to open up for any questions uh, you might have specifically about YouTube or creating content. That's something that I'm really passionate about as well. So the, uh, the chat channel is open. If you guys have any uh, questions, you can go ahead and put it right in the chat box. Um, maybe let's talk about how they can find uh, an SBDC near them. Sure. So um, like I said, our, our SBDC is Shasta, uh, Shasta Cascade, and we're servicing Shasta County and Trinity County here in Northern California. But there are, um, there's a SBDC near you, I guarantee it. And so um, the link right there, HTTPS uh, Americas SBDC.org forward slash find your SBDC. Uh, and you can put in your location and it will show you uh, your, the nearest SBDC office. Um, you can also reach out to us and we will help you with that as well. Um, and you can kind of see our, our our social media channels. And, um, you know, that's where we kind of promote um, all the events that we do. We do a lot of webinars um, on starting businesses or maximizing business. We have QuickBooks and all these other uh, amazing resources. So you definitely want to uh, subscribe to our channels and you can get the latest event information regarding all the things that are going on with our, our center and most likely your center as well. Um, but we provide these webinars online uh, because we know our reach is, is far beyond our center's region. Um, and all these, all the videos, all the webinars are also on our YouTube channel. And so you can follow our YouTube and subscribe. And so you'll see just a wealth of webinars, really anything uh, that you might, any challenges or questions you might have, it's probably been covered. Um, especially uh, with COVID-19, we, we've been really focusing on, you know, how to pivot and how to shift, how to thrive and how to relaunch our, um, our businesses during and post pandemic uh, period. And so, you know, use us as a resource. That's what we're here for. Um, if you also don't mind, uh, in the chat box, we provided a link uh, for a survey. Uh, it does us a world of, of good to receive feedback because this is for you guys. And we wanna know what topics are you interested uh, in hearing about and having a webinar and also how we can make these webinars better. You know, it's, it's, it's all about us providing uh, information for you, small business owners, in a, in a means that's going to be actually useful. And so, you know, we really love your feedback. You can be brutally honest, and um, you know, that's that's what we're looking for. Is we want to get better at being able to provide you guys with the information you need. There is a question in the chat. Starting from the very beginning of creating a channel, is there a step-by-step -step guide on YouTube to do that? Yes, there. Uh, there are. Um, if you go to YouTube, uh, there's a support channel um, or any some of the links that I provided um, are part of that support channel. Uh, but there's a huge community um, that YouTube has about supporting their uh, business channel, business channels. And like I said, they are very interested in you being successful um, on YouTube. And so there are step-by-step -step guides. And the most powerful thing that I found is the support community because that, that is not only YouTube, they moderate those uh, support groups, but it's, it's other YouTube channel owners that are helping each other out and uh, posting content. Uh, but it's really, really easy to set up a YouTube channel. Um, you know, it's kind of like setting up a Facebook group or setting up a, a website. You know, you have to kind of know your business name. <laughs> Um, you have to have contact information. And so, you know, you would put whether you're virtual, your website address or brick and mortar, your actual physical address or both. 
and your contact information. You could put your hours of business and things like that. Uh, but that's it. Uh, but the most important thing I really recommend is is putting your brand on there. And so that might be having someone help you with graphics or using a graphic tool uh, to put uh, the right appropriate size images in your banner for your YouTube channel, and then maybe creating custom thumbnails as well. So um, let me just talk about this for a second. When you upload a video, YouTube will arbitrarily choose a thumbnail to represent that video. But most of the time, it's not the best video. It's not the best thumbnail. You know, maybe it's a picture of you in an awkward position or a funny face or the sky. And so I really recommend that you use custom thumbnails that really represent that video. So if you have a video on introducing your business, you would probably put your logo as a thumbnail or you have a video introducing your product line. Well, you might have a thumbnail of your product line. And so don't leave it to YouTube to arbitrarily assign your thumbnail, provide that custom thumbnail. So you do need some digital brands assets to help make sure your channel represents your brand. But other than that, you know, once you have that channel set up, you just start uploading videos. Are there any other questions? I don't see anything. Okay, well, I kind of went through fast because I wanted to end for a Q&A, but I guess <laughs> I did a great job of explaining everything. Um, like I said, if you, if you can go ahead and go to the chat and click on that survey link, it'll open it another, in another window and you can go ahead and, and fill that out for us. That'd be much appreciated. Um, if there are any other questions, thank you for your time. Um, really appreciate you uh, dropping in and spending your morning with us as we do these webinars. And uh, we'll be stopping this uh, live stream now. <laughs>